it's really nice to be delivering this presentation uh, with dissemination and knowledge transfer having been raised already so many times this morning. Um, and what I'm going to try and do is just to give a snapshot of some of the activities of the, the Institute and the PCRN around this area, some of the resources that are developing from that. But I suppose I want to start by putting knowledge transfer and exchange in context. I think this is a phrase that people are increasingly becoming aware of, but it does very much sit within the broader context of health services research, translational research, this term of implementation science, which is a relatively recent term to focus on how research and research activity can make its way into practice and can create change. With knowledge translation, as it's called, or knowledge transfer, as we say, in influencing that process, and ultimately leading to quality improvements in these service settings. And there are a lot of players in this field. There are multiple organizations. Um, this is one, King's College has another, and indeed in Ireland we have the Centre for Effective Services, which are focused on that idea of implementation, of improving services using research in this way, that connection between policy, practice, and research. And also for those of us who are coming from an academic perspective, from a published research perspective, there are multiple journals that now exist that are interested in communicating that information. And in terms of how to do good implementation, there are multiple models available that look at how we can inform practice, how we can change practice through the research that we do. Some of you will be familiar with CFIR as a, as a model that identifies the different settings in which research and practice happens and the movement of knowledge from research into practice. The uh, Ottawa model is another really common one, but Paris is, I suppose, one of the most common frameworks for promoting research-informed action in health services settings. So you might say, well, do we not have enough information? Do we not have enough guidance from these various organizations and models? But I think the challenge is that these models do focus on the broad issue of implementation. And knowledge transfer, as I'm going to focus on, is one component of that. But it is an essential component. It is making sure that the lessons that we learn through research do make their way into practice settings in a way that is effective. Now, obviously, the textbook of palliative medicine highlights this. But when I look at this statement, I sort of feel I'm following this map from Calvin and Hobbes. It's not as straightforward as the call for knowledge transfer might suggest. There's lots involved, and there's lots of dangers along the way, including a hidden bucket of snowballs. And the first place is, what is knowledge transfer and exchange? And there's so many terms that are used, translation and um, knowledge mobilization. And in the work that, that I've been involved in with colleagues like Professor George Kernahan and others in the room with the Institute, this is the definition that we've adopted. This is the definition that has, has landed most with us, that it's the interactive exchange of knowledge between users and producers. And Mairead, you picked up on that in your presentation. And it's about increasing the likelihood that research evidence will be used but also to enable researchers to identify relevant questions. It is a two-way interaction. It is obviously central to the work of the Institute and the PCRN, and uh, Action 4 from the strategy, which will be launched today, has focused specifically on disseminating knowledge from research. Sonia has talked about some of the work done within the Institute that has given us some really important information on what we know about research in palliative care on the island and what the priorities should be. But what I want to focus on is some strategic knowledge transfer projects that the Institute has been supporting and, 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 and leading on around knowledge transfer. Um, first is going to be MTREC, an evidence-based model for the transfer and exchange of research knowledge. And then the Kindle project, which really has used that model to try and maximize the impact of research. And again, a number of my colleagues from these two projects are here in the room, and these projects wouldn't have happened without them, without the Institute, without the support of the funders. So first, MTREC, our evidence-based model. Um, many of you in the room will have heard me and colleagues talk about this model. It's a key component of the Institute. But I think the importance is that we, we developed MTREC to be a strong representation of the research. So it's based on a review of health services research. It identifies core components, not high level issues about um, you know, implementation, but specific tasks in effective knowledge transfer. What's your message? Who are your audiences? How are you going to facilitate this movement? But also recognizing that this happens within complex contexts. And we want uh, MTREC to be um, a model for palliative care. 
And as part of the work that myself and George and Cathy Payne, who's also here, have done, we asked palliative care researchers to take this model and to use it. And this is a little of what they said about using it. They felt the model was credible. They felt it was accessible. They identified that using the model was about timing. It's not enough to think about these things at the end of a process. You must be thinking about it from the beginning. But they also highlighted the importance of resourcing KTE. It's not enough to resource the research. You must also think about the resources involved. And what we were interested to hear was that some of the, 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 the participants in our case studies felt that this actually enhanced the quality of their research, not just their dissemination. But there were limitations and other areas for consideration, and one of which was skills. Ensuring that skills were uh, developing within the research community, and not just early career researchers, but established researchers, to think about knowledge transfer as being more than the peer-reviewed publication. Not, not, not doing that, but it being more. And just to give you an example, this is um, April, which is one of the projects from the, um, the, the, the Institute's Structured Research ne Network, the PCRN, um, Kathy Payne, who was the, the, one of the leads on this project. And this highlights that what no good knowledge transfer is, is it is about media and public events. It is about social media. It is about academic outputs, but it's also about practice outputs, information for practitioners. Not one of these things, but all of these things. And the Institute is really committed to MTREC being a resource. And just recently, um, we held the first uh, Knowledge Transfer and Exchange workshop. Um, it, it was last month, where a, a number of, of researchers from different uh, levels of experience, a number of practitioners and others, came along and worked through how we use this model, how we make it make a difference. So there is um, additional information now there available, which has been shown to be relevant and appropriate for palliative care that we can use, and the Institute are keen to develop this. But I also want to highlight the Kindle project. Um, the, the Kindle project really was funded by the HRB's KEDS program, was trying to, how can we learn the most from research, and not just from individual projects. So what Kindle aimed, aimed to do was to synthesize messages from multiple research projects. And Kindle gathered together 22, the, the outputs from 22 projects, 120 dissemination project, products, which included tweets, newspaper reports, peer-reviewed publications, other reports. And what we were looking for was trying to synthesize the key messages. And again, ensuring the good quality of the Kindle work. This is the, the protocol for that approach that was um, analyzed. And the aim was to identify the four key messages for practitioners and researchers in palliative care. And I don't think anybody will be surprised by those messages. They were about addressing the needs of service users and caregivers. They were about equal access to connected services. They were about addressing the general and specific needs for research in palliative care, but also identifying that there are challenges associated with this area. And what was interesting was this was, again, two very service-based messages two very research-based messages. But what Kindle did was to try and maximize the impact is we created four videos for each of these, uh, one video for each message, so that we would have simple snapshots summarizing the key findings available and accessible to as many people who are interested. And the Kindle project is hosted on the pa uh, Palliative Care Hub, which has been mentioned today. So Kindle is an example of how you can take really, really good quality research and learn more from it, particularly when it is bringing research together. And I think Sonia's original systematic review and the revised systematic review highlights the additional messages that can, this additional lessons that can be learned. But what Kindle shows is that we can look broader than peer-reviewed publication and learn more, and that we need to be dynamic and engaging in how we communicate. <coughs> So in terms of some key messages from these uh, strategic KTE projects within the Institute and from the work of the Institute and the PCRN, we know that effective knowledge transfer and exchange is central to the implementation of research knowledge and practice. And um, my colleague George and I often say it's not the only piece of the puzzle. Sometimes the context can be very challenging. The cultural uh, context can be challenging in terms of change. But if your knowledge isn't transferred effectively, nothing will happen. But we also recognize that knowledge transfer and exchange is a complex, non-linear process. The traditional view of peer-reviewed publications at the end of a project, I think we can all agree, 
is, has moved on. We are looking at very dynamic, engaging communication with multiple stakeholders from the very beginning. And it, it is a process that requires resourcing. It requires facilitation and it requires engagement with multiple challenges of communication. But I do think the system is developing around us. Again, examples like the HRB KEDS program is about recognizing the need for resourcing of, of KTE. SFI has funding for workshops that's focused on dissemination of knowledge. And researchers are, are increasing their awareness of this. But I think the Institute is very aware that researchers do need support to develop their KTE skills. And those of us who have those skills do need to be supporting the development of these skills in others, whether that be through mentoring, through collaboration, or through formal opportunities such as the workshop and the other resources the Institute will develop. The last key message, though, I suppose typifies why we're all here together and why there's so many different people in the room, is that really effective knowledge transfer and exchange requires researchers to interact with others, to interact with knowledge brokers like the Institute and other stakeholders, to interact with practitioners, with service users, with um, patients and families, so that we can ensure, going back to that definition, that it's not just about the research moving from the researchers into practice, but also the researchers hearing from those settings, hearing from those stakeholders, to make sure that KTE is made easier by the research being meaningful to those audiences. So I'll finish there. Thank you. <laughs>